Hello, I'm Mix Mouse and Man, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be working on a Mountfield 414 or 164. I picked up two or three as part of a job lot along with a Hater 41. Uh, these machines were purchased by myself um, as a going concern, spares or repair, not working machines. But these are one of my little tiny favourites. They're my bread and butter machines. I absolutely adore working on them. They're very, very simple. And when they're shined up and looking really nice, they, they sell really, really well. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Little tiny Mountfield 414 uh, powered drive machines. I've got one of two to pick off, so I, I might even end up doing both of these in the videos if they're quick fixes. But we'll see how, see how we get on. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mother Man, Man, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video and it's completely free of charge to subscribe. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's have a look at this Mountfield 414 and see if I can't get it to run, drive and do what it should do and then hopefully turn it for a little bit of a profit. Right, let's have a little look-ski. I've got this coming up soon, um, my uh, Atco Balmoral uh, 20SK. That's coming up soon, I need to get, just got the service bits on order for that. So these are two of the three lawnmowers that I picked up just the other day. I have also got a, um, a Hater 41, but I'm sure it's got engine knock, although someone decided to go and check the underside cowling. It could just be the cowling, but I think I've heard that noise before. Uh, it's definitely engine knock, I believe. Uh, so I've got two Mountfields to choose from. One is a Mountfield 414. Uh, I don't know if this is a 164 or 414. No, they're both 414s. And these are a power drive version. Um, it looks like the one on the uh, that side there ha has had a bit of modification. Uh, with a Quocast, it's got Quocast arms on there, and I know it came with a Quocast bag, so it's not actually the right bag for that, but I can always find another bag. This one needs a new pull cord, uh, by the looks of it, that's broken, so I might just go for that one. Quick pull cord fix, maybe a, a, a drive cable, or, or dead man's cable fix as well on that one, that doesn't seem to be working. Or do I go for the easier option, the better looking machine out of a two? Um, yeah, I think I'll go with this one. This one looks like it's more up together at the moment. Um, this one wants a bit more work. Uh, so I think we'll go with this one. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it even starts, I've got no idea. As I say, these are bought as a going concern. There is fuel in the system. The handle's on back to front, which is never an easy thing to, to understand. Let's prime it. Uh, dead man, but it's all back to front, so dead man is that one. Let's see what it do. Absolutely nothing. Let's get it up onto the bench and get it looked at. Okay, here it is, little Mountfield 414 up on the bench, looking rather sorry for itself. That fuel smells absolutely rancid. And I mean rancid with a capital R. Um, so we're gonna go for because uh, it's not even not even priming. No, not even priming. So I'm looking through the tube and there's nothing at all coming through through the tube. Absolutely nada. Let me just show you guys that because I don't want you guys thinking of to me, oh yeah, I know you're all game, tell me it's not even priming. I know what you like. You don't always have a go at me. Let's uh, bring you down here. So here is the uh, inside of the tube. There it is, and it, right at the back here, you'll see a little tiny bit poking up right at the very, very back. If I now prime, nothing. Absolutely nada. So it's not priming at all, and there is fuel inside the system, okay? So it's not priming, so let's uh, have a carby off, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so um, you saw it not priming there, which is standard when the main jets and what have you all bunged up, so straight in, and I know that Stumpy, my main Stumpy was working on one of these uh, the other night I was watching him, and, um, he was working on one of these and he mentioned me, so uh, I'll mention you, Stump. Um, he's a nice old boy. Uh, they call him Stumpy because he's only got one arm and he repairs garden machinery equipment uh, just with one arm. It's an amazing thing. I I personally don't know how he's got the patience for it. I know he's got no, I know he's got no, no choice, but I don't know how, 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 how you'd even do that. That, that would drive me nuts. Um, but hey-ho, uh, he, he's, he's getting it done. I don't want to come off of there in a minute. Yeah, breather pipe. That one, come on, it goes right. So you want to just pull that off very, very gently, swing it round and round the back here. 
there's a little tiny breather tube. Let me just show you, otherwise you guys and girls will say, oh, Mick, you didn't show me go. Oh, I'll show you, okay, hang on. Let me take it off the old perch. You're quite high up there too. Uh, so around the back here, you can see uh, there's a little tiny uh, priming assembly tube pipe here that's got to come off this carburetor as well. There's a little tiny clip on there. So undo the clip at the bottom and then just pull that off and then that will then release the air box off of the, um, off of the old carburetor there and then you'll be good to go there. Let me put you back on your perch, sit you down. There you go. So literally just get hold of that clip, swing it round, give it a, a, a squeeze and then just pull it off of the, uh, off of a tube. Oh, this, this machine's been uh, been sat for a while. Uh, carburetor doesn't look very, very clean. Two bits there to come off there as well. They go in the airbox. Uh, a pair of long nose pliers is what's needed next. And uh, we're going to remove the governor spring. I love these little engines. They, they, they are my bread and butter, without a doubt. I love these little engines. So many people have lots of problems with them, but I, I, I don't tend to have the issues that other people have with them. Just going to adjust the idler screw. Just take that out, just so I can move the throttle arm over a touch. Just to make it a bit easier to remove the governor arm. There it goes, right, that all comes off. Move that to one side. You've then got your fuel hose here, which is not too bad a condition. Just gonna remove a clip. And then I'm gonna get a pair of forceps, which I use a lot. Uh, decent pair of uh, hemostats, or as Bruce says, hemostats. Uh, clip that onto there. And then I then wanna get me, I keep using long nose pliers and someone, very politely bought me a pair of fuel removal pliers. I never do. I never did really do use them much, but I should do because uh, they are designed for the task. Just going to remove that fuel line. It's a uh, it's probably seen a few better days too. Now these fuel lines, you don't want to break these because um, you have to buy them independently because they are uh, they are slightly wider at the top end. I'm going to get a bit of a twist first just to break the seal. Um, these fuel lines are around about. 14 pound, I believe. So using my fuel hose pliers, I'm gonna remove that, tip that up. That's that done. Now keep that, um, <coughs> those hemostats on there, but I wanna remove the fuel. I'm not sure what that fuel looks like, so I'm just gonna remove my hemostats now. Now there is fuel inside that tank. But look, it's barely even moving. Let's uh, take that fuel cap off, see if that makes any difference. No. So there is fuel inside this tank, I guarantee you. But look, it's not even moving, it's just dripping. So it could even be a problem with just up this end. Now up this end, there is actually um, a little tiny filter inside this tank. And what happens is, is that filter um, gets blocked up. So there's a little spring up this top end. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that spring, a little tiny clip back with my finger. Just a Work that loose. God, take that off. And then I'm gonna try and just pull that fuel hose off the tank. There right, it goes, it's starting to run now. Look, I've just broken the seal to it, I think. Let's try and run some fuel out there now. Is that gonna run? Yeah, it's gonna run now. So whatever was in there was lodged. So the fuel's now coming out. So, but what I'm going to do is remove this fuel hose and there's a filter inside. I'm going to give that filter a clean and give a tank a swill because uh, whatever was in there uh, was blocking it. So let me get this fuel out of this machine and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, and there's the fuel and as you can see inside the fuel there's some bits floating about in there. Um, right down the bottom, there's nice big bits of brown sediment in the bottom there, whatever that is. So the fuel isn't brilliant. Um, uh, hey ho, it's what it is. Uh, but as I say, what I want to do is remove this fuel line off of this machine because uh, it wasn't moving beforehand and something was blocked. So I'm now going to remove the entire fuel line just by taking the clip off the front, bring the fuel line all the way around. It sits behind a little tiny housing clip just here. Bring that all the way out. I might get a bit more fuel come out of it now. Now we've got more of a direct sort of route. Just a touch more, yeah, not a lot more. Take that fuel clip off as well. And then I'm going to try and remove this fuel lead off of this tank. Oh, there you go. And there's the little tiny filter that I'm on about. Now, nine times out of ten, what I do with these is actually remove them. But you can see inside there, all that gunk, see all that stuff in there? That's all um, stuff that, that, that's allowed this filter to actually uh, block and, and restrict the amount of flow, okay? But what you can do is get some WD-40 or some Pocket Rocket or something like that and give it a darn good clean and an air compress off.
and just enable that filter to run a bit better than what it was. So I'll give that compressor as well, and we'll put it back in, okay? But that would be the main reason why this machine was actually not um, not priming. Uh, but however, the state of the carburetor does look quite bad. I will be taking this tank off or just flushing it out, make sure I get all the, all the debris out of there as well. I'll get some WD-40, because I have put some, still some petrol on this machine. And by spraying WD-40 just neutralizes the fuel, otherwise you get like a white burn mark where the petrol eats into the plastic, okay? I don't want that to happen. So now I can now remove the carburetor off, just push the gasket off the back, because that can stay where it is. I don't need that to come with it. So there's a little funny gasket there, take that off, take it round. There's your gasket there, that can stay on the carby. Uh, and you've got your insulation block just there. So here's our carburetor. Then we get it blown off on the outside, a bit of a clean up, and then we put this on the bench, have a look inside and see what that carburetor is doing. But I'm guessing, judging by the state of the outside of the carburetor, the inside is going to be no better. Okay, on the bench, uh, carburetor, boom. And also 10 mil impact just to pop the two bolts out the back. Normally when you tip the carburetor on the side, you get fuel coming out, which means there's no fuel going into this carb. Uh, so I'm just going to impact this one very gently. Just to get that moving. Oh, this is going to be bad in here. This is going to be shocking. Oh, my lord. My carburetor's got monkeypox. Look at that. Oh, I, don't know if that I don't know if that bowl's actually savable. Really, I don't. I can try. But I don't know if I can save that. That that's that shot. So what I might have to do is uh, order a new carb for this because I don't think you can just buy the bowls separately. Although I do have some spare um, bowls, but that that's yeah, that's bad, man. That's absolutely shocking. But there you go. Um, we'll go with it, okay? We'll go with it. See what we can do. I'll get some wire wool in there and what have you, and try and clear that up. Try and get it. To, to some form of usability, but I won't be selling the machine with that bowl like it. But uh, for purpose of video, I will try and do what I can for it. But um, I don't think we're gonna do a great deal with that. So let's get rid of that dirt and crap. We don't want that on there. Whilst we're uh, cleaning carbies. That's one of the worst bowls I've seen this year. Um, I want a carburetor screwdriver to try and remove the main jet. Before I even try and remove that main jet, I'm gonna put some spray down it because uh, that looks really, really dry in there. And in fact, the needle's not even moving either. Can't even, can't even move a needle at the moment. Oh my, this is a bad one. I'm gonna do well to uh, get this, this carburetor to work. I'm not even gonna use that screwdriver. I need my um, homemade one because uh, that's gonna end up breaking that jet. Now, it's imperative I try and get this jet out of here because without it, um, we don't stand much chance. So it might have to go into the vice yet. Let's get a good purchase on it. I'm just going to slowly rock this jet. Oh, I don't think it's going to come. I don't think it is going to come. I think, I think, I think this carby is done. Should move that. Ah, I don't know if it's got it or not. Something's moving. I don't know. Oh, that's fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully we are, we are moving it. Oh, I'll be surprised. I'd be really surprised if we get that out. Is it coming? Oh, I think I think we might I think we might have got it. Oh, that was that was the point of no return. That was that was either going to snap on me. I think we have actually got it. Oh, there it is. Oh, I don't know if I can get hold of it. Yeah, there it is. We got it. Cool. Oh, I did well. Get that out. I did very well. Look, look at the state of that. There's no way that would ever run. No way. Now inside here's an emulsion tube as well, which has got to come out. So put your screwdriver inside, 
and then uh, there's a little tiny, you see the bit hanging up just on top of a carburetor there, bottom there, that little tiny bit dessert, that's the bit you want out. So put a bit of leverage on that, right on top of a tube, push down, tap, if it doesn't come out, push it back, get some spray in there, but that tube's got to come out. Got to come out, judging by the state of that. Just keep working it, baby. And eventually, you'll get that to come out. But it's got to come out. It can eat, stay in there. That's hang on for dear life. I have got a special little tool, which I use for such, such problems in my carbonate, carburetor arsenal. And I use a little tiny crochet hook. Well, not that I'm into crochet, but, um, a little tiny crochet hook like this, that's what I use. And sometimes you can jam that up inside the emulsion tube, like so, and it gives you a little bit of a purchase if you can get it up in there enough. Now that one's actually gonna be a little bit too wide, so I have actually got another one, which, I, which is a proper tool, um, which I manufactured. Where is it? Uh, there it is. So this one is actually is a, is another crochet tool. <laughs> but I actually ground it all the way down to next to nothing. So what I want to do now is force that up into a tube, like so, and then, God willing, it just sort of bites it and starts to remove it, and then it goes like that, you see? And there's your emulsion tube. Little tiny crochet hook. Uh, and here's your emulsion tube. Yeah, I've seen better days. So I need to clean the emulsion tube, clean the, uh, the main jet. I'm going to remove the idler screw as well. That's got to come out. This is a, a bad carb. And then get underneath here. Uh, this is a slow idler circuit on here. If that's going to come up, it is. Just go very, very gentle with this because there's a little tiny um, o-ring on there, which is not inside there, which is lovely, so it's on here. And it is a, either that's dirt or that's your, what's that there? Uh, that's just dirt, cool. So the actual um, slow idler circuit is okay. And there's nothing inside there. There's normally an O-ring falls off inside here, but we've got that one all together, so that's good. So a quick clean up all around the car. We blow it off, make sure it's nice and clean. That's that bit done. So we're happy with all of those areas, but we still got to, we still got to try and manipulate this float out. Now, as you can see, that is actually not moving. That needle's stuck in there. So a pair of long nose pliers goes on, and very, very gently on top of the uh, the needle, just gonna try and just manipulate that out without it breaking. There it goes. Um, take that off now. There's a little spring on there as well, and, th and these uh, don't compress on these ones. So a little tiny nylon seat there, but as you can see, that, that, that won't even go back in the hole, see? So that's got to be cleaned out inside here as well. It's absolutely green as you like in there. So that's got to be cleaned. This carburetor is absolutely filthy, people. So uh, just to recap, emulsion tube, main jet to be done, a slow idler circuit jet to be done, uh, general clean on the carburetor. I've got a clean inside here where the inlet comes in. I shall be drilling out the, um, the slow idler circuit with some thumb drills, which I should show you how I do that very, very quickly. But this is gonna take a, quite a while for me to clean this carburetor on video. And I have got other Mountfield 414 videos, which will help you guys. But if you pick up some of these thumb drills, this little tiny pink one right at the very end, that's the one you want. With your slow idler circuit, that's, that's probably plugged. Yeah, it is, it can't even go in. Just screw that in very, very gently. Just take your time with it and it goes all the way in. See how that's gone in? Can you see that? So now it's in, that's a slow idle circuit now freed up. Okay, it's a little tiny pink one. You haven't got to push it a lot, just, just, just free it up. And once that's free, you can then squirt that one and it'll go all the way through the main jet. And if you don't do that on these, then uh, you'll run into problems. And then again, you see it just starting to run through there, see? So that's good. So that's that jet done already. I've got to drill out or rim out the, uh, the main jet and the emulsion tube with some file kits and uh, we'll be good to go. So let me get this done off camera because this is going to take a quite a while to try to make this carburetor clean because it is absolutely filthy. 
and then I'll come back to you once I've uh, once I've cleaned it all and then we're ready for the uh, reinstallation. I've got to try and do the bowl yet as well because the bowl is absolutely dreadful. Um, or try and find a donor bowl for it in Macabre at a box, but that'd be quite hard to find a 4141. Um, and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys in two shakes of a dog's tail, but it'll be about half hour for me. Okay, just to uh, bring you back uh, mid carburetor at a clean. Um, I've done the carburetor, that's all now been done. <coughs> uh, however, the bowl was too far gone. So I have managed to find this one, uh, which is in much better condition. Uh, I believe it to be off of a cheap Chinesium style um, carb uh, carburetor, but I believe it's the right sort of size. So uh, it's not the right one for it, but hopefully it will fit. Um, I've done my dimensions and it looks to be near, near, near enough, damn it, as a, as a, as a right um, fit for it. So uh, that's where we are now. I've got to clean these uh, bolt heads up because you don't want to be introducing any more dirt going back into the carby. Clean them up and then we'll get the machine back up on top and then we'll try and fit this carby on which has now been cleaned. But it was an absolute pig. I was uh, having problems with a carby at letting by. Um, but uh, since I've cleaned it fully now and uh, it, it seems to be a holding now at about five and a half PSI. So uh, that's good. Let me get all this area cleaned up and then uh, we'll get the lawnmower back on top and fit the carburetor onto the, uh, onto the lawnmower. Okay, lawnmower now back up on top. Um, I've put the bowl on, so all good to go there. Just make sure that your bleed um, bolt is the opposite side to your uh, fuel inlet. Uh, that can now go on. We can now fit our governor arm, governor spring on. There goes the arm. And important to put the spring on as well. Get on it. Oh. That's all on. Happy with that. Um, I want to hook up uh, my fuel line and filter. Give that a quick little blow off through there. Uh, filter's now clean and should now be running. Right, in fact, do, do you know what? That's actually got no filter in it. There should be little gauze in there and there's not. Looking at that. But it will trap bigger parts, to be fair. Let's give that a bit of an air blow because we were getting a fuel restriction. Good, that can then sit up inside the tank, plop, and then put our fuel line over top of that. Plop, and then that goes uh, on a fuel clip. That can go up, we put it on later on, and it comes down from the back here. There's a little tiny housing for the uh, fuel hose to go in, which is a bit fiddly to get in. Lots of people just take these out, including me. So what I don't want to be doing is introducing dirt um, as we're going. So I'm just going to remove mine. Just push it out. Like so. Retrieve it. Wherever it's just gone. There it is. And then you can then open it up. Um, and then fit it. And then go around the back and just refit the clip on, that's the easiest way to do that. But before we hook, we hook that up, because I have just disturbed a lot of dirt behind there. That's good. Uh, another little fuel hose. Stick that on. Stick that on. Before we do that, I just want, to just, run, just want to run a little tiny bit of fuel through. Now I can use the fuel that's already in there, as long as I don't uh, upset the fuel too much and inherit any dirt. Just want to make sure we're getting a, getting a good fuel supply. Not too much, just a dribble. That's enough to, to bring it down. Yeah, there you go, I've got a good fuel supply coming through. That's good, we're happy with that. We had no fuel supply earlier on. So that can now go on to the carb, put your clips on, one there and one around the back. To be fair, this little mount field has been quite testing. Um, I didn't think this carburetor was going to be any good, but uh, hopefully we have cured it. We can now give that a bit of a clean off too, it's all a load of dirt. 
behind there. And then hook this pipe up onto the uh, pipe just here. Just push that on. Plop. And now I'm going to get some fresh fuel. Not the stuff I just took out of the tank. Let's get some fresh fuel because now's the time to test for fuel leaks before we go too far. Let's put a bit of fresh fuel in, some V-Power fuel. A good amount. That's good. We get a bit of blue rag. Clean the underside. That's good. And now I want to test to see if this is actually going to prime. Prime for a good time. Okay. Let me just get my torch. Oh, bring you guys down. So you can have a little tiny nose of what's going on. This will be very, very hard for me to do one-handed, two-handed. So we go into uh, the throat of a carb and you can see the little tiny uh, emulsion tube at the back or middle of a carb. And now if I prime, yeah, we're getting a good prime there, so that's good. So now we have a priming, fully functional uh, carburetor. Now you know that you've got it right because if th these engines tend to hunt and search quite a bit, okay? So if it's not priming like that, then uh, you either have uh, a poor fuel supply or an air leak and it's sucking too much air in. Knowing that it primes like this tells me that, that, that the bowl is on correctly, okay? Swing that round air breather pipe to go on the back of the engine which i'm looking for now whilst lining up the bolts for the uh, carburetor as well so it all goes on in one movement little pipe on the back is really important so that all goes on i've got two little tiny collars that came off with the air box just slide them into place that just centralizes the um the carb in fact i should have done that before put the air box on mick because that'd be a bit of a pickle to get get those on that will they might have come back off and I'm just going around the back here, and these two little tiny collars, they just sit inside the, the carburetor bolt holes. They're going easier from the back. Apparently, if you're going from the back, it's always easier. I'll leave that comment with you guys. So that can now go on to there, as I say, and air breather pipe to go on there. That's good. Two little tiny 10 mils. <coughs> I've got to locate my 10 mil ratchet now. I'll use my impact, and I? Uh, that one on there. <coughs> that one on there. And, all, and the reason I'm putting um, fuel into the tank now is that I want to make sure I've got no fuel leaks. Okay. <clears throat> so, I've not even looked at the spark plug yet. No idea what's on there. I dare say it's going to be one of my favourites um, if it's a standard. Oh, no, it's got an Oregon in there. So, we'll leave that Oregon in there just for now. Um, I don't want to go much further. With that. I'm going to put the air filter back on, put the air box back on. We have got a bit of fuel in there. I'm going to put the fuel cap on. And I'll meet you outside and we'll go for a little fire up, see what it's doing to check the oil as well first before I go any further. If the oil looks, look, looks shoddy, I should be taking it out anyway, but fill it up to a good level so just so we have got a decent amount of oil in this machine. And then we'll go from there. So a quick little tidy up and I'll meet you guys outside. We'll go for a fire up and see if we haven't saved this little tiny mount field 414. Okie badoki. It's all done. I've got a bit of a tidy up. Uh, oil was good, but uh, low. So I have now just since... Um, Put some more oil in. Um, have done the blade yet? Bit of a tidy up. Move the handles back round, back round the right way because I believe someone's had a little tinker with this one because it's uh, got crow cast parts on. It's not a, it's not a genuine mount field. It's got a bit of a, bit of a mix and mix and a match to it. But I have got a bit of a tidy up. I don't know if the belt's on yet. I don't know if the belt drives or anything like that. But here it is. And that's the difference between night and day. Once it's had the old. Uh, Mixed mowers touch. Let me just find a grass bag for it. I've got so many of these little Mountfield 414s. They're an absolutely great little machine, you know. I love them. Because they're great, they're so just great around my area. So the grass box wants a bit of a tidy up. That's a bit dirty birdie. But uh, it'll do. There you go. So have a quick little look at it. Show you what it looks like. So that's roughly what it looked like to begin with, something like that. And now it looks a little bit like that. So that's night and day for you, night and day. Uh, it looks good all over, no fuel leaks, nothing going on that it shouldn't do. Uh, for a machine that I picked up as a going, con going concern, 
like his little brother beside him. Uh, we could potentially be uh, quids in it if I can get it to run and not hunt. That's the idea. Uh, I've got about another two or three of these to do yet. If anyone's got any Mountfield 414 boxes and you want to sell me one, please feel free to contact me via email or in a comment section. So if you've got a spare grass box that looks like this, this is what it looks like. You can always identify it just by, just by the handle itself. That's what the handle looks like and it looks like that inside. Two little tiny lugs here and here. So if anyone's got one of these knocking about, that we don't want. If you want to donate it or if you want to sell it to me, either either just let me know. Mountfield 414 or 164, they're all the same. Uh, just let me know. So there you go. So now we've got a Mountfield all up and uh, together, but does it run? It doesn't mean anything if it doesn't run or doesn't drive. 100% prime and can hear that a mile away. Let's see what it does now. Hopefully no hunting, but it may do yet. It's got a bottle, there you go. There you go. No hunting, no surging. Start a second pull and drives and cuts out. Mmm. The carb may want another, another um, clean yet, or it could be the spark plug. I'm gonna go spark plug. Let me change the plug out. I'll back to you in two ticks. Right, let's see then. So all of a sudden it, it just stopped, right? So I don't think it's fuel. It sounded a bit more to be like a, like a, like a dead short to me. So it could be just be a spark plug. It's, it's filthy dirty, dirty birdie. So, oh, hang on. Is that loose? What's that doing? Spark plug's actually loose. So spark plug was actually, was actually loose in the machine, hand tight. Not in the hand tight, it's just loose in the plug hole. So that could be something to do with it. It's been running really, really lean. So a new plug going in. Uh, this is a, a Briggs & Stratton, an NGK um, overhead valve plug. So it might just be that someone has been fiddling. I didn't check the plug. Um, and it wasn't in tight enough. Could be like, like a lack of compression. So let's tighten that up. See if that makes any difference. Okay. Right, let's give that a go. Still no fuel leaks. Okay, 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 okay. Let it run for a second. It's a bit smoky, but it's probably been tipped up. It was running for about two or three minutes beforehand before it cut out. I think it was a plug. What do you guys reckon? Yeah, that's fixed it. Pretty sure it's just a plug. It was only in hand tight. Well, not in hand tight. I don't think it's all the way in. So it'll go on its test anyway. Ten, fill up the tank, 10, 15 minutes um, of running time. I'll sharpen the blade to balance that all up. Um, it's got a new spark plug. It's got a new airbox cover. It's had um, carburetor clean and what have you, all serviced up. So yeah, good to go. Nice little mower for someone. Bit of a crossbreed between a Crowcast and a Mountfield 414, but this will do someone. Nice little light mower for a little tiny lawn in my area. So there you have it. 
Quick little um, fix on a lawnmower, a Mountfield 414, which came in as part of a going concern. Job lot of stuff, uh, spares or repair, nice and really cheap, just how I like them. A quick little carburetor clean and a few little donor parts here and there, a brand new air box, a bit of a top up with your oil, blade sharp and balance to be done. And that machine's now all up running, doing exactly what it should do. It does have to pass its test yet. All my machines that I have all have a 10 to 15 minute test starting from, starting from cold, let them run. And after 15 minutes, stop them, then restart them. And then the next morning I start them from cold. As long as I pass them tests, there's no more I can do. But that little Mountfield 414 is, is 100 miles away from where it was when it first came in the workshop. And now should go on to sell and make someone very, very happy and mow their lawn for this coming season. So that's good. If you like this little episode of Mixed Mows and Mower Man, hit the old subscribe button or whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. And it's completely free to subscribe and we have lots of videos on my channel of how to fix your garden machinery and equipment of all different types, makes and models. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mows very, very soon. But until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.